more accurate number on attendance. This is what we're talking about today, mindfulness, the, the art of stillness. Just keep in mind that the information provided in this presentation is intended solely for the general information of the audience. It's not medical advice and shall not replace consultation with your physician or other qualified health provider. If you have any health-related questions or problems, please seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider. In the overview today, uh, if I happen to go over the time allotted, feel free to drop off. A copy of the presentation will be sent to you and to all that who registered. So basically today, mindfulness, where it originated from and what it is, mindfulness and mindful meditation, both have many proven benefits. I'll be talking about some techniques for using mindfulness to manage stress, how we can move our bodies and experience the benefits of mindfulness, the basics of a mindful eating practice, and how to apply mindfulness in our daily lives. Now, as I'm talking today, not only are we gonna be learning about mindfulness, we're also gonna be practicing some mindfulness exercises today as well. So on the first slide, I always like to start out with a cartoon. So which one are you? The stick figure is walking next to a dog. Is your mind full of thoughts? Or are you mindful like the dog? Compare what the person is thinking about and the dog. Pets and children are mindful. They live in the moment and we need to be more like them. Mindfulness allows you to simply exist in the present moment. It is about doing one thing and only one thing with an awareness of what you are doing. We are so often stuck in the past or worried about the future. It can be refreshing to focus just on what is happening now. Even though this is simple, it doesn't mean it's easy. For many people, it takes some practice. We're gonna give it a try right now. Before you begin, just take a few minutes here, a few moments, just to make sure that you found a quiet, comfortable place. Somewhere where you're free of distractions, somewhere where you can just relax, be alone, and have a few minutes to just get grounded into the moment, into the present moment. And let's start by having you get your body into a comfortable position. Just begin by taking a few natural breaths. And when the, within these few breaths, gently close your eyes, allowing yourself to just breathe. And with each, each breath, just relax. Breathing in through your nose, and taking a slightly longer time to release that breath as you exhale. And having each breath come in through your nose, and again, a little longer breath out through your mouth. Right now, we're just taking a few moments to just be still, quiet, calm, just in this moment together connecting the moment, being present and slowing down. We'll start this mindful check-in just by focusing on how your body feels. We're starting at the top of your head and doing a very slow conscious body scan, going down over your face, your neck, Paying attention to anything that comes up, any feeling, any sensation, any emotion that you feel in that part of your body. Moving down to your torso, your waist, hips, thighs, knees, your calves, your ankles, your feet, 
and your toes. And just slowly move up through the body again. Just noticing anything, any emotion, any physical sensation that might be there. Not that you're gonna do anything with it, just noticing it. Move up through your feet again, your ankles, calves, knees, thighs, hips, waist, belly, chest, shoulders, neck, chin, face, forehead, all the way to the top of your head. And as you get to the top of your head, just bring your focus back now to your breath, just allowing the air to move in and out. Again, taking slightly more time as you exhale. And maybe this is the first break you've had in this busy day. Maybe notice that you were carrying a lot from your day as you did the body scan. There's no need to judge, no need to try and figure things out, just allowing yourself to have experienced that. And now just give some attention to your breath here and now. With everything going on, just letting yourself be right now in this present moment, nowhere else. Taking just a few minutes, checking in with yourself in this way. Continue to just take a couple more breaths. And as you take your next inhale, feel free to start opening your eyes and bringing yourself back into the room. Blinking if you need to or shaking your head, maybe move your fingers or your toes just to wake up a little bit and come back to the room where we started. This kind of mindful check-in can happen anytime, any day. Sitting in your car before you start driving or before you step in the door at home. And maybe when you're lying in your bed in the morning or in the evening, just do a quick scan to see how your body is doing. How is your mind doing? What's there? What do you notice? and taking those breaths and just letting yourself relax. It's a wonderful tool just to learn how to get grounded in the present moment and pay attention to what's going on inside of you. So what is mindfulness? Mindfulness basically comes from an age old Buddhist practice with the religious aspects taken out. It's simply paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment and non-judgmentally. It's just what we just practiced. Mindfulness is about putting down our juggling balls for a little bit. It's about embracing the beauty of monotasking, just doing one thing at a time. Now meditation is one of the many ways to tap into mindfulness. Meditation is not a way of making your mind quiet. It's a way of entering into the quiet that's already there, buried under the 50,000 thoughts the average person thinks every day. Did you happen to know that those thoughts that we have, many of them are the same thoughts we had yesterday, and the majority of them are negative. Now, when we combine mindfulness, the psychological state of awareness, and meditation, we get mindful meditation. We can do anything mindfully, such as housework, walking, eating. And I'm actually gonna talk about those a little later in the presentation. Now, mindful meditation is not about shutting the brain down. Really, it's about acknowledging the mind at work, where it's going, what it's doing, non-judgmentally, and consciously refocusing our attention on the present moment by paying attention to our breath and our senses, which helps keep us focused on the present. The mindful meditation has many tangible benefits, 
including stress management, stress reduction. We're more in control of our emotions, improves our memory. We can focus on tasks. We feel good with improved sense of well being, lowers our blood pressure, lowers the risk of heart disease, and improves our immune system. Now, it can be really helpful and encouraging to begin your formal meditation practice with these attitudes in mind. They can be a guide and a foundation upon which to build your practice upon. Each of these attitudes can help you in every area of your life. And the entire practice of mindfulness is to cultivate these attitudes over time so they can permeate and enrich your life. The first one is non-judging. Being aware of your thoughts and of your judging mind without judgment. Not stopping the judgment, but simply observing it. We have opinions about everything. So it's about being a neutral spectator of all thoughts, feelings, sensation, and any life circumstance with no intention of putting it into it. Another one, patience. Opening gently to the pleasant and unpleasant experiences, realizing that it is all part of the flow of life, not rushing through the unpleasant or unenjoyable parts of life to get to the better parts. It's about being patient with what you deem painful, unpleasant, hard, and realizing that everything happens in its own way and time. Trust. Through this practice, we are learning to develop a trust in ourselves, our practice, and in our lives. We are also learning to take good care of our health and well-being and building our, on our own intuition and self-guidance. Beginner's mind. With this attitude, we are trying to see things as with fresh new eyes, just as a toddler is learning new things for the very first time. Seeing with breath and each moment as a brand new experience, letting go of prior experiences and seeing things through a brand new perspective without the coloring of past experiences, thoughts or judgment. For example, it's like seeing the moon for the first time and relishing in its beauty. Now, mindfulness is non-striding. It has no ultimate finished product or outcome. It is simply a type of attention that we bring to our lives in the present moment. And again, is a state of being. Acceptance, willingness to allow things to be just as they are, not as you would wish them to be. Now, this is not a passive stance, simply a deep acceptance of who you are right now and of the things happening in your life and not of how things should be based on comparing yourself to others or social media. Letting go, it's really releasing the need to hold on to certain thoughts, emotional states, or any idea about anything. Just letting things be and not grasping firmly or clenching onto any thoughts or ideas. Loving kindness, in this mindfulness practice, we are cultivating positive feelings of love and compassion initially toward ourself, then to someone you like, then to an acquaintance, then to someone you dislike, and then to the entire world. Loving kindness towards ourselves and others gives us the necessary support to face and experience the raw reality of our lives. The last one is gratitude. Just as mindfulness gives us a break from overthinking, gratitude gives our emotional lives a break. When we actively choose to acknowledge those things that are working in our lives, including our bodies and our minds, we automatically bring more peace and balance into our lives. We could do this simply through simply mental noting of things that we appreciate or directly communicating to people in our lives we're grateful for. How about mindfulness in the workplace? Mindfulness can be used in the workplace, whether that's your home office or if you're actually back in the office, it brings increased focus, meaning more concentration and better self-management, which leads to better time management. Focus is stated time and time again as the secret sauce to success and accomplishment. Focus is often what helps people move ahead. Now, mindfulness aids in this by assisting us with gently letting go of distractions, like the piles of emails in our inboxes. Keeping our focus on the task at hand also works to keep us in the present moment at the same time. And this can help you accomplish more in fraction of the time. 
think of mindfulness as anti-multitasking. It's about embracing monotasking. And small meditation sessions, one to three minutes a time, can help you unwind from the day-to-day -day demands and stresses. And we're gonna do a few of these in just a minute. Using your work meetings or other work-related activities and functions to stay in the present moment is a great way to utilize mindfulness in the workplace. Through doing this, you are not only more engaged in your work activities, but you are incorporating mindfulness into your day-to-day -day life, which is the whole point of this practice. So let's try one. Let's take just one minute and give this a try. So this exercise is about focusing on one thing and one thing only. And we all want to be our most productive selves. Sometimes our brains just won't cooperate. So getting your mind working for you with this simple exercise that takes only just a minute. So take a look around you. I want you to pick one object on your desk or nearby in the room. I want you to focus intensely on this object. What do you see? Notice everything about your object. Pretend like you're seeing it for the first time. Observe its color, its shape. What textures do you see? How was it made? Allow your mind to really look closely at this object and nothing else. Simple, right? After about a minute, I want you to just take a deep breath and go about, go back to, a, to your day, go back about your day. That's it, okay? This exercise can help you clear your mind. It's a form of a mindfulness practice that trains you to focus your attention on the present moment. And you can do this exercise anytime you want and, and how often as you want. Now, if you find that your mind is wandering or you can't stay focused on your task at hand, just give it a try again. See if you can use it to bring your mind back into a focused state, ready to engage the world and the tasks in front of you. Mindfulness while we're working. Now, many of us have had to adapt to working from home during the pandemic. So how do we stay focused or mindful amid the distractions, especially if family members, kids, pets may be present during the workday? Now, without in-person meetings or lunch outings, even trips to the bathroom, it's a little further than just a few feet away, the days can start to blend into one. It's tempting to jump straight into your work emails or even work later than usual because these blurred lines between your personal life and your work life. Skipping out on breaks from work to pause and reset can leave us feeling burnt out and fatigued. Calendars are our friends right now. Be intentional about carving out downtime in your schedule and using your calendar to set clear boundaries with your team for when you'll be away. On the flip side, you might be feeling isolated from working at home alone. Through a positive lens, your new routine can provide more flexibility and time to check in with loved ones. So try scheduling informal video chats with colleagues and friends, not necessarily related to work. It's helpful to schedule and protect moments of social connection among coworkers. In lieu of the time that we would naturally see each other physically when we're physically together. My group of coworkers, we have um, virtual coffee hour, we have a crafting hour, and we have a lunchtime meeting called Parenting During the Pandemic. Now, these are optional. They're informal, virtual, social gatherings to help us stay connected. So working remotely usually correlates to more time on the computers or phones. While frequent tech use 
isn't, isn't necessarily a bad thing, but being in front of a screen can be physically and emotionally draining. Our minds need time to unplug from the digital chatter. Hide your phone. Even if you're not using it, simply being able to see a cell phone hinders your ability to focus on tough tasks and stop notifications, things like news stories or entertainment news, weather alerts, traffic alerts, those are all distractions. And end the day like you mean it. A 2016 study found that if people think they should be reachable after work, they feel less in control and have more of the stress hormone cortisol. It's too easy to check email when the computer is right there or get up early and start working in our pajamas. But you have to create the boundary between work and personal time. End your day and walk away. This is Tina. She always has a million things going on at once. Her web browser has 12 tabs open at once. She's emailing, she's on her tablet, she's making plans, she's watching her kids. She's managing a lot of things at the same time. So what's the problem? Well, we are often spread too thin. For many of us, jumping around between projects and activities can be unsatisfying. You might do a little of this, maybe a little of another project and never really finish anything. Or maybe you get things done, but not as well as you could have if your focus weren't split in so many directions. You can be more focused productive and efficient if you sometimes decide to single task instead of multitask. Single tasking is simply doing one thing and one thing only at a time. Pick an activity that you often multitask. See how it feels to spend some time, even just 10 minutes, solely focused on that activity. Now, if your mind starts to drift to other concerns, notice it and say to yourself, I'll deal with that later. It may be useful to group activities into categories for single tasking. For example, you could put your emails into one group, phone calls into another, and running around doing errands into a third. Then you could do each category in a focused way instead of trying to do several of them all at once. Now, actually, I used this technique last weekend. I made a list of the things that I needed to get done at home some of the things were emails, some of the things were errands, other things I'd had to do outside. So I grouped them by the time of day. Because it was such a beautiful day, I chose to do the outside items first, saving the computer-related items for later in the day, like after dinner when it was cold outside and dark. Then the errands were accomplished in the middle of the day. I actually managed to get most of the items accomplished in the one day, leaving me time to relax the next day. Now, working parenthood has its challenge. Even when you don't share a working space with your children, one tangible action is organizing shifts with people in the household. Parents can use their break times to play a quick game or enjoy a meal with their families. This is a rare opportunity parents get more of when they're working from home. Now, while mindfulness itself can't solve the practical implications of our, our global situation, it can enable parents to be kinder to themselves, to be more fully present in each moment and guide their children through this difficult time. So how can we use mindfulness to help us manage stress? The mindful practice of, staying a, of paying attention to the present moment helps us control those racing, repetitive, and non-productive thoughts that lead to stress. It allows us in effect to self-regulate. This practice of paying attention to an experience as it unfolds. Now that is not the default mode for most people. We tend instead to spend much of our time reacting to events and spinning out explanations, implications and stories, all of which often create stress. Now paying attention allows us to cultivate a more direct experience of what is happening and nothing more. STOP is an easy way to practice being mindful in the face of stress. When you notice something that has triggered you and you're about to react, follow these steps. Slow down. 
take a breath. Observe, what are you feeling in your body? What are you thinking? What other possibilities exist? And then proceed considering multiple possibilities. It helps also to bring the attitude of kindness to this practice, accepting your thoughts and feelings as they are. It also helps to bring curiosity to explore the situation with new eyes and an openness to new possibilities. To whatever arises, ask yourself, could it be okay? Now you can practice this in small moments, developing skills that will serve you well for more challenging times. Now one stress management technique is to use visualization to bring your body to a state of relaxation. And we're gonna try this. First, what you're gonna do is you'll picture a peaceful scene. You'll imagine its sounds and its smells. See if you can find a state of deep relaxation. So let's give it a try. Close your eyes and take three deep breaths. Breathe in through your nose and slowly out through your mouth. Again, breathe in and exhale slowly. One more time. Again, breathing in and slowly out through your mouth. Now begin to visualize the following scene. You're walking along a beautiful deserted beach. The water is turquoise blue. The sound of the waves breaking on the shore lulls you deeper and deeper into relaxation. You are barefoot and feel the firm white sand beneath your feet. You can hear the sound of the surf as the waves come in. The sound relaxes you more and more. You draw in the salty smell of the air with each breath. Smell that salty air. Your skin glows with the warmth of the sun. You take in the whole scene and feel very calm and at ease. Soak up the sights, sounds, and smells and find a place of peace inside yourself. When you are ready, take a deep breath and open your eyes. Now, what, what was this about? This was using the senses of sight smell, touch, and hearing. You imagined a peaceful scene and that helped you find a state of relaxation. But try to do this again in the next few days. See how well you can free yourself from feelings of stress and anxiety. There are many benefits to meditation. This is just a few. It appears to change activity in the key pain processing regions of the brain. In one study, meditators experienced a 40% reduction 
in pain intensity. You get a boost in chemicals, serotonin, dopamine, and endorphins all linked to a good mood. Your blood pressure drops and the effect isn't just temporary. A study showed that people who meditated twice a day for 20 minutes lowered their blood pressure. Now stress triggers that stomach churning fight or flight instinct, shutting down digestion. And when relaxed, the body reboots and gets the digestion flowing again. Swelling subsides. It can reduce stress-induced inflammation from conditions like arthritis and asthma. Now, there are many apps that can turn your phone into a pocket mindfulness coach, everything from beginners to master meditators. What about mindful movement? Flow, or maybe you've heard the term getting into the zone, described by athletes, is defined as a state of altered consciousness where we are completely immersed in whatever we are doing. Now that's the key to entering this state of mind, enjoying yourself and staying present. Now getting into flow is not reserved for elite athletes or professional musicians, but it's accessible to everyone. It involves finding activities that you truly enjoy that feeds your soul, doing them often and being mindful as you do them. That's it. Focus on loving what you do and flow will follow. For me, it's figure skating. As soon as I, the blades hit the ice, I'm completely focused in on my body, the sounds of the blades pushing through the ice and the feel of the cool air rushing past me. I'm completely immersed in this activity. Now the body is the home base of mindfulness. Our bodies are always living in the present moment and we can enhance the connection we have with our bodies by doing moving meditations, body scans and informal body check-ins. Doing these type of mindful moving meditations that connect your mind, body and breath include practices such as yoga, chai tea among many others and can add variety to your traditional sitting practice, provide exercise and open up other avenues for self-healing. Now, mindful walking accomplishes so many things at once. It's physical exercise, it's stress relief and mindfulness meditation all in one. Now, body scanning is a type of mindful meditation in which kind, gentle and open awareness is brought to each part of the body. And this is a great place for beginners to cultivate their practice. That's exactly what we did today at the beginning of the webinar. Informal body check-ins simply involve remembering in your day-to-day -day life to be mindful. Mindful eating. You guys remember going to maybe a wine tasting or, or a chocolate tasting or even those the city food tours, you know, where you rush from place to place and you shove food and drink in your mouth and then you move on to the next one. No, 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 that's not how mindful eating goes. So during these types of tasting, the objective is to really taste or savor the item, to be present and evaluated as well. It's a relaxing, slow process. All components are important and it involves all the senses. It's the, the look of the food, the smell, the taste, and the reaction on the tongue and on your feelings. This is exactly what mindful eating is all about. So the basics of mindful eating, breathing and checking into the belly. You take some deep breaths and you check into your body and your stomach. Do you feel physically hungry? Maybe you're just thirsty. What are you hungry for? What's your level of hunger? Assessing your food. In this step, we wanna investigate our food. What does it look like and smell like? Does it look appealing? Where did you get this food from? What in, went into making this food? Is it a whole food or is it processed? Slowing down while you're eating can help you both enjoy your food more fully 
chew your food, take pauses in between bites to take in all the flavors and the aromas of your food. This can help with proper digestion of your food, and this will help prevent overeating and tuning into when you feel comfortably full. Investigate your experience. This means checking into your hunger and seeing how satisfied you are. Gently letting go of distractions during eating. That means the cell phones, the computer, the TV. Bringing our full attention back to eating will help us with remaining engaged and present with the meal. Chew your food thoroughly. So this enhances that digestive process and allows you to really taste and enjoy your food. And it activates the appetite regulator. The mind and the gut have a connection where the gut sends signals to the nervous system. However, it takes about 20 minutes for the brain to register that we are full. Thus, this acts as an appetite regulator and can assist with minimizing overeating. Savor your food. This means taking your time, really taking in the full sensory experience, enjoying the texture, the subtle and bold colors, bursting layers of flavor, the visual presentation, stimulated emotions. Eating can be a really full sensory experience that is deeply satisfying and engrossing. Take time to eat foods that nourish your taste buds as well as your body and slow down enough to highlight your efforts. Now here's a list of some foods that actually lend themselves more to mindful eating because of their very structure and their nature. It actually forces us to slow down and be more careful, thus present and mindful. So things that have a brightly colored with textured foods, as well as, as, well as foods that take effort to eat, artichokes, oranges, anything that's gonna have a peel, anything that makes you slow down before you can eat it. So these are great foods to practice mindful eating. You breathe, you slow down, you can observe, and most importantly, have fun with your food. In a world of doing, 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 it's important to take a moment to breathe, to just be. So how do we do this? These are pictures of my pets and they are just being. They're not sleeping, their eyes are open. They're just being, they're living in the moment. And like I had said, pets are mindful. They're always living in the present. But for most of us, we're nearly always doing. We do household chores, we do work, we do errands. We're constantly striving to do the next thing to get to the next place, to get to the next promotion, to buy the next gadget. Our minds are naturally in a mode to do something. Now, mindfulness teaches us how to switch into living in more of a mode of being rather than doing all day, every day. So what do we mean by being? Being is a space where we let go of striving for the next, for what's next, or thinking about what has been that we wish could be different. It means staying in the right now. It's allowing yourself to embrace and be aware of what is in the right now. To simply be means just sitting, sitting with yourself, existing, being in the moment only, without wondering about the future or judging your past or hoping for more. Now, there's nothing wrong with spending time in do mode. It's about not spending all of your time in that hurried, get things done state. Creating time to just be is easier said than done. Even watching TV, that may not feel like you're being very active, but it actually still puts you in the doing mode. So try to carve out a few moments today, even just short ones, where you practice being. Just let yourself be still, be present, and feel your body and your mind not doing anything. So here's your homework assignment. When will you do and when will you be? So think about the next few hours. What are three things or activities you will do? Maybe you're eating lunch. 
or gonna walk to the restroom or you're typing, maybe you're driving or you're gonna hug your child. What three things, locations or situations will you then let go of your doing list and practice being? As little as five minutes, doesn't have to be the whole afternoon. Things like sit and feel time pass through you. Stand still and breathe or close your eyes and breathe. You can be mindful anywhere, anytime. So in our world of digital distractions and rush hour traffic and all the chaos swirling around us, often our minds start to reflect this distracted chaotic state. And for many people, the quiet peace that comes with bringing complete focus to whatever they're doing is completely foreign. It takes practice to learn how to bring your focus into the current moment throughout your day. At the same time, pulling yourself into the moment and truly doing what you are doing is incredibly empowering. I'd like to suggest a variety of ways that you can try to build more awareness and more mindfulness into your day-to-day -day life. Now, one place to start is getting out of bed. Before getting out of bed, take a few moments to fully notice where you are. Notice the texture of your bed, the feeling of the sheets, the sensation of sleep slowly giving away to consciousness. Notice if you're wanting to get out of bed or if you're wanting to stay in bed. And if you find yourself having a judgmental thought, simply notice that too. Another great place to be mindful is when you brush your teeth. For two or three minutes, see if you can keep your entire focus just on the activity of brushing. Feel the toothbrush on each tooth. Taste the toothpaste flavor. Notice if it changes while you brush. Notice your arm holding the toothbrush. Notice how you stand. Pay careful attention to the sound of the water in the sink. You can also take a few minutes to practice being mindful as you start going throughout your day. Mindfully walk to your car or to the bus. Notice every detail of the experience. Or try mindfully eating a piece of fruit after lunch. You can fold clothes mindfully or put paper into a copy machine with mindful intent. Another place to be mindful is when you're doing something pleasant, like taking a walk or a shower or listening to music or holding a child. Practice being mindful doesn't really take any time away from your day. It's just about remembering to be fully present, focused and noticing for at least a few minutes every day. Now to wrap up the presentation today, I wanted to leave you with some resources. If you're looking for additional information about mindfulness and meditation, you can check these out, mindful.org. There you will find articles, podcasts, events, trainings, and courses. My Strength, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. That's our mind, body, and spirit program. The UCLA has a Mindful Awareness Research Center. They have guided meditation podcasts and many other resources. And Insight Timer is offering a free 40-day course called Mindfulness Daily at Work. Of course, there's an app for that. So HealthNet does not endorse any of the apps listed here. However, there are many to choose from on this topic. And my, uh, my strength, this is our free program. This is our self-help health club for your mind. HealthNet members can browse through topics that fit that best fit your mood. And they have a wonderful mindfulness module. I always like to remind our members about our health coaching program. Tackling new health goals can be challenging, but you don't have to face it alone. Working with a health coach, you can prioritize your goals strategize a plan and they support you through your journey. Also, if you have a health concern, HealthNet members can call the nurse advice line and speak to a registered nurse 24-7-365. You'll find lots of information on our health portal for our health members logging on to your HealthNet account, healthnet.com. You'll go to the wellness tools and we have a lot of of information on our health and wellness programs. 
We offer discounts. Members can receive discounts on Weight Watchers, chiropractic care and acupuncture services, eye care, hearing aids, even our fitness club discount. Now, if you're not a health club, mem a health net member, please check with your health plan to see if they offer similar programs, services, and discounts. Last but not least, please mark your calendar and join us next month for our webinar in June, Return to the Outdoors. We're gonna be talking about the link between nature and joy, how nature can help improve your work and give you tips on ways that you can reconnect with nature. Thank you so much. For, your, for joining me today. I hope we'll, that you will join us again next month. If you have not already done so, please chat the number of attendees. If you happen to be in a conference room or used a single sign on with your webinar code today. Again, thank you so much. Have a mindful rest of your day. Bye-bye everybody.